Hey guys, time for another quick tip tutorial and this time it'll be on rendering and lighting in ZBrush and we're going to be focusing more on rendering than lighting but we want to get into lighting first so let's just actually before we go to lighting what I want to do is go to movie and we're going to set something up here so go to timeline go to show this will show your timeline what I want you to do is then sort of zoom out a little bit and then what we can do is just move the camera to where you want it and then just click on the timeline you'll see this little circle appear there and that just moves that um, sort of sets a keyframe and what you can do is just move around and then have different angles for your camera setup okay we can just go back to show and now you can just move around it with your left and right arrow keys okay that'll just be easier to set things up so next we can go to light we can click on this light bulb to switch the light on it should be on by default and what we can do is move the light around with the sphere okay it'll just move things around for us in the direction you see if we want the rim light what we can do is actually click on this uh, sphere and what will happen is it'll go to the back of our sphere and that'll be a rim light okay we can click on it again to bring it to the front and what we can also do is choose the second one. Now, the second one by default is a room light. I'm just going to switch it to red so we can make it easier to see. And by default, it's actually quite low in intensity. So I'm just going to move it around here. Again, you can see that on the sphere, it's very low. But if you bring the intensity up, you can definitely see it here as well. And again, if you click on this, uh, you can just move it. But if you click on it now, you can definitely see because we brought it to the front, it's no longer room light. So you can definitely play with lighting here. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you have your light properties. You want you want shadows to be enabled, okay? SSS, you don't have to, but shadows, you definitely want it, especially if you're exporting this. Okay, so quite a few things here, as you can see, you know, general lighting stuff, uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can just switch the lights on and off. You can move them around. And when you're done, when you sort of uh, like the uh, setup that you got, you can go to Z plugin, you can go to Z rush to Photoshop, and you can send it to Photoshop, okay? It'll send it with all of these settings. And this is just something that you can edit in Photoshop later. That's quite easy, but um, it's a little bit of a hassle. So what I'm going to do is press Shift R. You can also press this button here, BPR. You can also press uh, the button below that handles the pixels. And um, just for rendering, if you turn it down, it just makes rendering a little bit easier. But when you want to finalize your renders, you might want to turn it back up to 3 again. So I'm just going to bring our lighting and our render tabs here. And over here under BPR render pass, you can actually see our renders being passed out there. You can go over to document and export that. This will export as a normal uh, sort of JPEG, right? You can click on save and this will just take basically a screenshot of what we have here, right? And you can crop this picture if you want as well. Okay, you can crop it by size as well, uh, or you can change the file size. And what we can also do is export these pieces here, right? You've got the mask, you've got the shaded version, right? You've got quite a few things happening here on the BPR render pass. And one thing I didn't show is that if you, um, so instead of skin shade, if you use something like mad caps, right, any any mad cap material, you'll notice that if we go to the lighting uh, over here and we change the lighting, nothing happens. That's because if you know what mad caps are, they're just, they have lighting baked into them, right? So you cannot change them. So these mad caps, they're not going to do anything, right? You can change the lighting as much as you want, nothing is going to happen, right? But if you go to something like basic material, the lighting will change. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to use mad caps for lighting. Uh, you can, but if you do want to use different lighting, make sure you use a different material and not mad caps, because that's definitely going to, uh, you're not going to get any results with that. Okay, so to recap on lighting really quick, uh, what, what you can do is bring up the light, you can move it around, right, you can switch on multiple lights, you can click on the uh, sphere again to bring it to the back for room lighting. Remember that mad caps cannot be used for lighting, they have the lighting baked into it. And that is pretty much it. And don't forget that you can go into movie and show the timeline just so you can set up frames, right? So you can set up your different camera angles. It's going to be a lot easier to do it this way. And make sure you have perspective on. Okay, and yeah, that is pretty much it for lighting. Next, what I want to do is click on the floor here. Just so we have a floor plane for our renders. I'm going to go over to draw and under draw, you'll notice that we've got perspective there as well. And most importantly, we've got floor. Okay, you can switch it on here as well and we want to change the grid size just bump it up a little bit so it covers our entire model and the floor is dictated by the lowest sub tool so it doesn't matter what it is if i move this sub tool down to the wheels automatically if i just move the camera here automatically the floor goes to the lowest point which is this sub tool if you have an inv invisible sub tool what will happen is that and that's lower than any of these points your floor will stick to that so just make sure that you kind of know what's going on next i'm going to press shift r and you notice the render is a little bit different um, that's because I changed a few settings here and what we're going to do is mess with that next. So let's go down here to render and under, uh, well actually we've got triple S here and we've got AO, something that we can mess with. So after you render you can change the AO and the sort of shadow properties and that's over here under render properties, right? 
you can actually switch them on and off. So if you don't want ambient occlusion and triple S, you can just switch them off, right? And if you'll notice over here, triple S is off and AO is off, right? It's grayed out. So you can change the settings here or enable them here and then you can sort of customize your settings on this side here. Okay, so let's go with AO and actually not AO, maybe let's do shadow. Okay, so with shadow, we can change a few things. So like the general strength, right? Uh, probably don't want to put it in one, just leave it back to where it was actually. Uh, what we can do is mess with maybe the angle. I think the angle is a good idea. So let's mess with the angle. If we put the angle up, the, your shadows will be very, very soft, right? If you put it down, it will be very, very sharp. So if I bump that up there and just put the strength to normal there, F strength is floor strength and the G strength is global strength. So now if we look at the floor here, um, this is just because the general angle, not because the floor strength, right? You'll notice that it's very, very soft, okay? If I bump this angle down to something like five, right? Or even two or one, right? Uh, and if I render that again, I'll just move the camera and render it again with Shift R. You notice that my shadow is all of it, not just the floor. It's very, very sharp, right? You can see it's very, very sharp. So, you know, if you want sharper shadows, you can definitely do that. So to recap on our shadows and um, uh, AO settings here, you can enable them and disable them right over here. You can enable other things like fibers and fog and whatever. That's under render properties. And then over here on the individual settings, you can actually mess with those and just sort of crank them up or crank them down and just kind of experiment, right? So AO again, you can mess with all these settings. They're kind of self-explanatory, right? And then fog if you want to do that, but we're not going to mess with that just yet. Uh, so another thing we can do is with um, transparency. Unfortunately, you have to come all the way down here to display properties and then BPR settings. Then you have to turn on BPR transparent shading on. You'll say yes, and then after that, you can play with this visibility. Zero means invisible, okay, and then 100 means completely visible. So you want to sort of uh, mess with that, right? So between sort of uh, 50 and 80, I think, is a good mark. Again, it depends on what you want to do. So I'm just going to do it with these um, sort of coral plants here because it works a little bit better. It's a lot easier to see. You can see my visibility is on 13. It's almost invisible at this point, and if you bump that all the way up, it'll be visible again. That's only when you render with Shift R, okay? What you want to do as well is make sure to turn it off and turn BPR visibility and shadows all the way to 100. And of course, you can come here to your render pass and export those images out. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to rendering and we're going to have a look at this tab. Okay, so the render sets. So after you've rendered with Shift R, uh, what you can do is pick one of these presets. And actually, let me just re-render this. I'm just going to move it and move it into place with my left and right arrow keys for the... Um, the timeline, right? I'm just going to re-render that. And now what we can do is we can pick one of these presets here, okay? The render sets. And if you pick them, you'll notice that it sort of takes on that, um, those filters, right? So now it's a completely different look for your render, right? You've created something really cool there. And there's a bunch here, so you can have a look at them. But the one I like to use is that the sketch one. And I also like to use this um, radial overlay. That's, a, that's one I was using before this, okay? Radial overlay is a good one. And this is the result right here, right? But you'll notice that it does this, uh, it sort of messes with my materials there. And that's under BBR filters, and I'm just going to turn this off. That's something we're going to discuss a little bit later, so let's just close that for now. We'll get back to it in a second. I uh, Don't worry about it for now. But what you can do is you can save these settings, okay? I already have it saved out, which is why it was loading that one by default. And of course you can load and uh, save them at the same time, or <laughs> load and save if you want. And that's very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the default one, so double click on that, okay? And right now, nothing happens. It's just a very plain default render, which is what we want because we want to create our own one, okay? I'm going to come down here to uh, BPR filters, okay? And what we have, we have all these filters, right? F1, F2, so on and so forth. We're going to switch it on by clicking on the circle, so it's now an open circle. We're going to go to filter type. So the default is noise. We want material shading, okay? Material shading, that's going to help us out there. Um, not outline, <laughs> material shading. And that now means we can shade it with a material. So let's pick a material, maybe red, because that's quite um, that's quite obvious. And I like to pick an obvious material and then change it later, and you'll see why. So we can bump the material all the way up for material shading, and then of course opacity, kind of like in Photoshop, right? If you bring the opacity down or up, and then we also have modifiers for our uh, filters, right? We can override the mesh color, right? Uh, that's quite a lot, so we might turn that down. And we can apply shadows as well. So it looks weird without shadows, so I'm going to leave that on. And maybe we'll override it for now just to see what we're doing. Okay, then we're going to come down here to all these options. There's a bunch here. We're going to go through just a few of them, not all of them. 
um, you know, we've got SS, we've got AO, we've got shadows, um, quite a few there. But what we're going to mess with is cavities. So we just want to affect the cavities, okay? So I'm going to bump that up. And then the stuff on the left is the setting and the stuff on the right of it, the sort of exponent of it, right? And then you can kind of mess with that. So I'm going to mess with the cavity radius. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to change the modifier to override mesh color. I'm going to switch that off because it's a bit too powerful for us. And here we can just kind of uh, mess with these settings again. So the, the left side is what you want to change. The right side is just an exponent of that. So we're going to click on that material and we're going to choose black this time. Um, just that black. So we get a black outline. Next I'm going to go to F2. I'm going to switch that on. It's blur by default, but I don't want blur. I want something like saturation, right? If I click on saturation right now, nothing really happens. If I turn it to 100, it's uh, oversaturated, right? Uh, so we want to bring that all the way down. And of course, you can mess with the opacity as well, but I don't really want to do that. And that is pretty much it. Also, as the modifiers is grayed out because uh, that's just how it is for some uh, of these filters. Next, we'll go to filter three, switch that on. We can change that. So let's say I want paint. I want to change the paint color to maybe blue. And again, modifiers are off. Uh, blue just so we can see what we're doing mask so now let's work with masking mask if i turn it all the way up it just affects our model not the background okay zero is background and model and minus one is just the background now we want to use the background so let's just leave it on minus one so now we know we're definitely changing that and um, i just want to change the color here so since we're going with black and white we can change to like a gray or a yeah like a light gray okay and that is pretty much it we just created our own uh, filter set right and what we can do is we can obviously save this and let's go to f4 actually while we're at it it's orton by default which is actually what we want orton is kind of like lighting almost um and what we're doing oh i also forgot to show you guys these blend modes you actually have a blend mode after the filter and the blend mode is just like in photoshop when you want to darken something or overlay something or screen something in this case that's just what that is so we're going to change orton to 100 we're going to make sure the mask is uh one so it's only affecting our model Maybe bring it down a little bit so it's affecting kind of the model mostly and then just a little bit of the background. And next I'm going to move this light right at the bottom here so it's kind of shining in that direction. I'm going to change the normal, which is just the normals of the model, right? So it's affecting the normals of the model. Okay, and you can, you'll can you notice if we just move it in the direction, it just moves along with what we want. So in this case, uh, top left is good enough for me. And again, we can take that exponent and bump it up or bump it down. In this case, I'll bring it down a little bit just to brighten things up. And yeah, maybe around about there. It should be good enough. Okay, and we can also mess with the RGB, but not really something we want to do right now, so we'll just leave it. And there you go, we have our own custom filter, right? And we can, of course, save this, especially with all that work, and we can load it as well. And so to recap on filters, we can open up our, uh, our Lightbox filter after we've rendered something with Shift-R. We can then select one of the filters. It'll do a bunch of uh, filters for us. And then what we can do is we can kind of experiment on our own. Now we know how filters work, we can say, okay, F5 is Orton, that's cool. I like Orton, so we're going to keep that. Uh, maybe we, we've got saturation, yeah, that's good. Okay, um, outline edge. Right, that's going to outline the edge for us. We can change the color of it, obviously, if we want to. And let's see, we've got paint as well. So, and we know what that does. So we can change the color over here if we want. And now, because of all the stuff that we know, we can change all of that. Um, you know, without sort of uh, relying on those filters, with those preset filters, right? And of course, we can go over here to BPR Render Pass and export that, or just manually export this. Um, again, I'm just using the radial overlay, right? And here we are in Photoshop and. You can see the mask over here, make sure you select the mask and actually select it with a magic wand. And then you can create a new layer, right? Basically do Photoshop stuff with it, right? That's just all I'm doing, just showing you, you know, and then again with the overlays and so on and so forth. And we can change, you know, the exposure and whatever, whatever. General Photoshop stuff, right? So I'm just showing you that you can just take it into Photoshop and get that done. And that is pretty much it, right? Uh, quite a few things to go over there, but if you just watch the video again, I think you guys will really get it. Um, you know, you can have quite a little bit of fun with these renders, right? Um, you can have, add filters to it, but like I said, the one that I use the most is the radial overlay. That just gives your model a nice good lighting in the middle and then a nice black background. But of course, you can change the black background, you can change the lighting, you can maybe put an outline to make it a little bit cartoonish, right? You can change a lot of things about it, and that's just for one piece of the render. And if you just want a normal render, 
with none of the crazy stuff. You can just do what I did in the beginning of the video, which was just pressing Shift R and then messing with the AO and SS settings and shadow settings, right? And yeah, that is pretty much it for this one. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section. And hey, if you really like my content, be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.